and let's take care of this problem here. So the question sentence reads, how long does the jog take? Okay, so let's highlight that question sentence and we see that it says, how long? How long does this thing take? How long does the jog take? Well, that's telling me that we're looking for a time period. We're looking for how long something takes. That is time. So I'm gonna write that down right there. I am looking for time. Now from here, I see that the information that I'm given is 9.6 miles. That is my distance. And then I see six miles per hour, and that is a rate. So notice that I have distance, I have rate, and I'm looking for time. So with that said, hey, I'm gonna set up my formula, distance equals rate times time. And remember, the most important thing is to fill in the information in the right places. So we have distance right there, so that's 9.6. We have the rate over here, so that'll be six miles an hour. And we multiply that by time, and there we go. So from here, what we're gonna do is notice that we are looking for time. So we're not multiplying forward to get distance. We're working backwards to get time by itself. And that means that we're going to divide. So we are going to divide both sides by the six, just like that, to get that six out of the way on the right side. And now all we have to do is divide 9.6 by six. Now, if this isn't obvious to you, don't worry, it's not obvious to a lot of people working with decimals here. So let's just go ahead and divide six going into 9.6, and then we'll see what the answer is. We'll put in the decimal place in that quotient so we have it lined up nice and easy. And now we'll divide. Six goes into nine just once, and then we're going to subtract one times six, which is six. We have three is the remainder, but we're not done. We're gonna drop the six down right here. And now we have six going into 36. How many times does six go into 36? Yeah, that'll be six times, and there we are. Boom, all done. Our final answer here, the correct answer, is going to be 1.6 hours. And that is answer choice A. All right, next question here. So as always, we read the question first, that's basic strategy, and it says, what is the total elapsed time? And in parentheses, it says, including the rest, including the rest period that we took. Okay, sounds good. Let's highlight that. What is the total elapsed time? So before we begin, take this mental note. Because it says we're looking for the total elapsed time, so how much total time was taken, we're gonna look at all of the situations and we're gonna add their times together. That's what we're gonna do. Before I continue, do you agree with that idea? Right on. So before we continue, before we add up these times, let's first go ahead and find the times. Let's find those individual times. So read along with me. Let me go ahead and get this red highlight out of the way first. And let me show you. We have first that this bus travels 90 miles at 45 miles per hour. Then it rests for a quarter hour and then goes 45 miles at 60 miles per hour. My party people, how many different situations are we dealing with here? How many different events did I highlight? How many events? Three, exactly. There are three events that we have to add up the times for. However, however, do you notice that for the red situation, the first situation, we have distance and we have rate. Do we have the time, everybody? Or can we find it? Yeah, we can find it. We can absolutely find it using our formula. Let's write this in red. Here's the first part. We have distance equals rate times time. I'm going to plug in 90 miles for the distance, plug in 45 miles per hour for the rate, and then we have our time right there. To get the time by itself, we're going to divide because remember, whenever we're looking for distance, we'll multiply. When we're looking for anything else, the rate or the time, we will divide. So we'll divide both sides by that 45, nice and easy on both sides. 
and we see that we cancel out on the right side, leaving us with 90 divided by 45. Somebody help me out. What's that going to be? 90 divided by 45? Yeah, that is two hours. So right there, everyone, right there, that is the first time period. Is the final answer two hours? No, it's not. It is not. It is just the time for that first part of the trip. Now, when we take into account the second part of the trip, well, the second part, we rested. We rested and they gave us the time. 0 0.25 hours. So I'm done with part two. I'm good. Because again, it says including the rest. So we want to include that 0 0.25 hours. Now, number three, we'll look at situation number three. And situation number three is represented as 45 miles, which is a distance, 60 miles per hour, which is a rate. So I'm not given the time, but I can absolutely find the time. I can figure out what that is. So here, my distance is 45 miles. My rate is 60 miles per hour. And that's multiplied by time. If you switched these up, if you accidentally swapped out the 60 and 45, and you thought that the distance was 60, you would have gotten answer choice D, and that would have been wrong. That would have been wrong. Let me continue here and show you how this is wrong and how it actually would be B. Let me show you here. So I'll divide both sides by 60. Once we do, cancels on the right, but notice that we are dividing by 60. And once we do that, we'll do 60 going into 45. And let's get it done. So 60 doesn't go into 45. So we have to use decimals. We have to use some extra zeros. And so from here, 60 goes into 450. That will be seven times. Seven times 60 is 420, leaving us with 30 remaining. And we'll drop the zero here, giving us 300. 60 goes into 300, a total of five times, and that's clean. It's a clean five times because 60 times five is 300, giving us no remainder. So what that means is the time that we took on part three, right over here, is 0 0.75 hours. So now we can finalize this solution. Now we can do that because all we have to do now is add up each of these individual times. And when we do that, 2 plus 2 point, or excuse me, 2 plus 0 0.25 is 2.25 then we add the final 0 0.75 remaining and that's going to give us a total of three hours that's the grand total boom and that's why the correct answer is b again answer choice b and not answer choice d d would have been achieved again by dividing the 60 by 45 and not the other way around and that's why it's so important to take the numbers for what they are and not try to fit them forcefully into some convenient scenario because it feels good.